Alors, comment les entreprises contribuent en concret terms to the implementation of the SDGs decided by the UN in 2015 for the period from 2015 to 2030? First of all, one must understand that the SDGs are a reference framework that is very important to show the relationship between private companies, society and the common good. Today, the corporate world has been shaken by the crisis in 2008-2009 that went beyond the banking sector and challenged its legitimacy. An extremely important idea emerged from this. No economic activity can last if it does not address the needs of its time. What are the needs of our time? This is where things are extremely interesting. If we are to believe research conducted by BETC, which is a major advertising agency, with uh, consumers in 28 countries, most consumers and citizens say today that their choice of a brand, a product or a service is increasingly conditioned by the social, environmental and ethical performance of the company, which means that if companies want to survive, they must address these demands of consumers, not only in terms of responsibility, of corporate, social and environmental responsibility, but also by addressing the needs for new products and services, circular economy, sharing economy, access to all, uh, to essential services. These are key elements in public opinion in terms of their relationship with the corporate world. And the financial world has understood this. A very interesting event took place this year when the chairman of the largest investment fund in the world, BlackRock, BlackRock is a huge investment fund that has about 5% of uh, the CAC 40 in its uh, portfolio. He wrote to the CEOs of companies and said, having financial results are good, but no company will survive if it cannot demonstrate its involvement in solving the issues of society. So a very new context. And this is where the SDGs fit in, in the relationship between the corporate world and society and the capacity of companies to address the common good as defined by the international community. That said, how can the corporate world act? All companies, of course, have not reached the same level of maturity. There's what we called the uh, what we call the buffer effect. Do you take the 17 cryptograms of the SDGs and say, I work on SDG 1 to SDG 17, and I contribute fully, or do you use what the SDGs are, not only the 17 objectives, but the 169 goals, which are much more precise, to and use them as a leverage for better social and environmental performance. That is the key challenge. So how does Veolia react to this? Veolia was naturally concerned by the SDGs because it is a company that operates in essential services and environmental services. It manages and contributes to access to water, access to sanitation, access to waste collection and processing, access to energy for all. These businesses are, of course, very much concerned by the SDGs, but it's also a company which is connected to many communities, and the key challenge for it is to address the needs of these communities to manage proximity services for proximity customers. Veolia had been an important actor in the first UN program, known as the Millennium Development Goals from 2000 to 2015, with an aim to eradicate poverty, or at least significantly, significantly reduce it. And Veolia took an interest in its own business line, namely access to water and sanitation. 
but it also created a reporting system of its contribution to access to water and sanitation. So from 2000 to 2015, which was the MDG's calendar, it can say and prove, all of this being validated by a third-party independent body, that it contributed to access to water of 7.5 million people and sanitation for 3.5 million people. But at the same time, we also had to understand that the SDGs are not the same as the MDGs. It's a merger of the objectives of the struggle against poverty. So therefore, the development agenda and the environmental agenda as created by the Rio summit in 1992 and reaffirmed in the Rio summit in 2012, which is where the principles of the SDGs were created. So at Veolia, we already had our own commitments that came before the SDGs. Three commitments for the planet, three commitments for communities, three commitments for employees. Among them, there was one that we had voluntarily left open as we waited for the indicators and goals for sustainable development be properly identified. And when they were published in September 2015, we examined them on three levels to see how we could contribute. First, through our traditional business lines. Of course, we fell under goal six, which is water management and sanitation. We naturally fell under goal seven, which is sustainable, renewable and cheap power. And we fell under goal 11, durable cities, sustainable cities, because there was a target in terms of waste collection and processing. And the second thing we did was to think about how through our future strategy, our growth, we could increasingly contribute to the SDGs. And we found two major objectives there. One on innovation, because we are a highly innovative company, or more precisely, in order to address the needs uh, of the planet in essential services by using natural resources less and less. That's one of the crucial points in the SDGs. We're going to need to innovate. And finally, sustainable consumption. Veolia is increasing increasingly involved in the circular economy, which accounts for 17 or 18 percent of its revenues. It is one of Veolia's nine commitments to sustainable development. And naturally, we have taken these two objectives into account. So we had five goals by which we are directly concerned. And then we asked all of our external stakeholders how they envisioned us in terms of these SDGs. And they very much insisted on the issue of innovation. So innovation came back as one of uh, the major challenges for Veolia, and probably higher than we'd expected. And then that of partnership, the SDG 17, which has no goals, but which is a condition of all the others, in a sense, because the spirit of the SDGs is that there's no appropriation by one person or one of the players, but that all of the players and stakeholders get together. Governments, communities, charities, NGOs, to find the best solutions to address the environmental challenges of tomorrow. That is what the SDGs are about, and that's how they need to be envisioned within a company. And today, and probably that's the most important aspect, the corporate world is changing. The corporate world is understanding that it is with social performance, environmental performance, and by factoring in the needs of the planet and of its population that a company will be legitimate, but also will create value. Then, of course, for the future, how will the value be shared between all of the stakeholders?